Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to show you today something I just discovered uh, yesterday, which is to take your uh, a normal classical guitar and turn it into a sort of cello or mandolin um, in, a, in a way that you can play cello and mandolin pieces. So I'll just show you uh, what we're gonna what we're gonna start with, and then I'll show you how we're gonna how we're gonna get there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a normal classical guitar. Uh, I know this doesn't look normal. If you can see closely, it's got, got some extra frets. That's actually just so you can play uh, microtonal music on it. Like that. But that's not what we're doing today, so ignore the frets. Um, we are just going to look how do we turn a normal guitar How do we turn it into something that can play something like this? really 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 low low resonating sound um, so it's possible you don't need anything special you probably do need a spare guitar so I'm going to take this this is just like a super super cheap uh, it's like a Yamaha C45 friend gave it to me when when he was leaving um, it's fine it doesn't sound bad it's in tune um, it's like properly intonated, well, just about. Um, but it's a it's a fine guitar and it's one that I kind of use for experimental stuff, which is why it's got these microtonal frets. Um, so the first thing is we just need to detune it. So we're going to be tuning it in fifths. So a fifth, you count up five notes. So the lowest one's going to be C, and then G, and then D, then A, and then E. And I'm actually going to get rid of one of these uh, one of these strings because they're not they're not useful. Uh, they're not needed. So the high E stays exactly where it is and the low E has got to go down all the way to C and then the ones in the middle, some of them will change and one of them will stay the, stay the same. So first, we really want to be tuning quite a lot and probably want to use one of these so we can take this down to C. I don't know if I've got this exactly on C but So the E string goes down to C. Um, I think I probably will actually use a use a tuner. Give me a moment. Because if there's a, if there's some of you watching this and you wanna you wanna tune off me, uh, I suppose I should make that possible. Ah, okay. So almost on almost on C. Okay. So that one goes down to a C. This one goes down to a G. stays where it is because it's a D. That wasn't quite a D already. So you've already got this. So it's quite nice and resonant, even on quite a cheap guitar. Um, it's really, it's really quite pleasant. Now, this is where things get a bit spicy. Um, I tune my G string on the guitar all the time up to A. Uh, I never had it snap, but I always get a bit nervous. Anyway, so let's try. There you go. So there we go. Already we've got four strings tuned, which is the, which is the same as the um, as the cello. So we've already got uh, them, them tuned. We can actually already do all of our all of our mandolin. Um, or violin or cello phrases, whatever. Sorry, I forgot the viola there. If there's any viola players, please don't be offended. I'll 
Okay. So those are the first four four strings. Now this is a tricky thing. The B string. The thing is, we don't really need it anymore if we're tuning in fifths, uh, because we've already got the A below. So if you tune this down. We've already got this one, and this one probably sounds nicer than that. Um, so we don't really need to use it. If we tried to tune it up to the next one, which is E, it would probably snap. I'm not going to do that. I'm tempted, just out of interest. But we've already got an E string, so we don't need it. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to remove the string entirely. Uh, now, you can do this by hand, but I would recommend using, this is like a Jim Dunlop um, uh, string winder. For years and years and years, I thought this was like one of these just gimmicks that they try and sell you to, to eke out uh, like more money um, from musicians. And I just didn't buy one, and I don't know why, because they just remove so much of the pain. It just makes restringing and like, just removing strings, adding new strings makes it so easy. Um, Cost me about like, I don't know, 15 US dollars or the, the equivalent thereof. Saved me a tremendous amount of time. Um, let's have a go. All right, she's off on that end. Uh, now, because I was quite economical in the way that I tied this, hopefully it should come off quite easily. Um, Untied. So the B string's coming off now. Um, I suppose I could keep it, uh, and I might because it's in quite good condition. So if I ever snap a B string, I can have it around. I suppose I could always, always just go back to the normal guitar. So I will probably wind this up. Um, I don't know how well you can all see this, but the the way to to wind the strings is you start off with a bit of a circle. It's kind of like how they how they come out of the the packet. I don't know how well how well this can be seen. So you make a little circle and you loop it in and you twist it around itself a few times to get like a little knot. Which will hopefully kind of hold itself in a circle. And then you just have to keep going around and tucking it in and then out. Because if you don't do this, it's gonna end up it's getting all tangled up in whatever bag. Okay. Um you didn't come on here to, to watch me twist a string around like this, but you get the idea. Okay, you see there's a bit of a loop. I can leave it. I'll just put it to one side. Okay, so now we've got our four, we've got our five fifths. Sounds quite nice. I mean, those of you used to the sound of, of uh, like a string quartet tuning up will recognize this sound. That's the cello and it's a violin. So that's quite nice. Um, the only problem is now we've got this gap, here, which I suppose you could you could deal with, but um, it really it really messes with the with the finger. So actually, we're going to take off the E string and then we're just going to move it, and hopefully, I'm not going to I'm not going to snap it on the way, and then we're going to end up with uh, with with five single courses all tuned in fifths which will allow us to play a lot of music written for the cello, written for the, um, for the violin, for the viola, for the bouzouki, for the, uh, the mandolin. Um, so just while I'm doing this, I can tell you a little bit about, about the motivation. Um, so my, my little sister's getting, getting married next year to a great guy, um, a great guy called Mike, Hannah, Mike, if you're watching this, hello. Um, and she asked me to play some music at her wedding. Um, so I was quite thrilled and quite nervous. And I thought it would be a really good idea to play Bach's Prelude to the Cello Suite, the one we, we all know and love. Um, so I learned it on the, on the mandolin. I've just been learning the mandolin in the last couple of years, so that was a kind of like big, big stage for me. Um, big kind of step up, that was a big test. I spent a lot of, lot of time learning it. Quite proud. Sent a recording to my sister. I said, "Oh, what do you think?" And um, I think she liked it, but she wasn't very impressed. And she wanted, she wanted it to be more like, um, 
what she said, the traditional version on the classical guitar. Hannah, if, once again, if you're watching, uh, I love you, but actually the classical guitar is not so close to the, um, the original version. The mandolin is actually much closer to the original version. Anyway, pedantry aside, um, it's my sister, um, sorry, it's, yeah, it's, it's my sister's wedding, not mine, um, and, you know, he who pays the piper calls the tune. So, oh, hello, my love, sorry, I'm just recording a, a video for YouTube. Um, it's all right. Um, it's quite a long video, it's quite a casual one. I'm just talking to the camera. Oh. Um, do you want to say hi? Hi. Hi, <laughs> okay, <laughs> my wife. Um, what's up? Oh, wonderful. Okay, I'll be down in, down in only about like five, ten minutes. Thank you. I love you very much. Sorry, it's so hot here because I've turned off the air conditioning. Um, don't stay up here. It's, it's, it's terrible. So I'm trying to look cool for YouTube. It's actually um, it's so hot. All right, I'll see you in a bit, okay? I love you. Um, anyway, where was I, YouTube? Uh, oh, I was talking about my sister. Uh, so she wanted, she won on a classical guitar. I thought, okay. I gotta, um, gotta learn it on classical guitar. I really, really couldn't be bothered because uh, I really don't like the arrangement for classical guitar. I find it really awkward uh, of the of the cello suite. There's lots of notes that you can't sustain so well. Um, the difference, like the interval between some of the notes as well, just like it's not nice, um, and it just doesn't flow as nicely as the one on mandolin. So then I thought, well, what, happens if, um, what happens if I retune my guitar down to the, the intervals of a cello? Right, what happens then? And uh, here we are. I discovered that actually I could play it on classical guitar. It sounded better than the, uh, the sort of regular arrangement of Bach's cello suite. Uh, and I didn't have to learn it. And I realised that all these pieces that I spent the last couple of years learning on the mandolin since I started suddenly I could just port them to, um, port them to the guitar. So that was, um, it's quite a happy moment. So thank you, Hannah. Um, thank you for, for sparing me to do this. All right, I've almost, almost got this, this wound round. Um, just a little tip. You see I'm holding the string tight as I'm winding it. If you get a nice even winding, then what that means is later when the string is coming up to pitch, it doesn't slip so much, okay? You will save so much time in the long run when you have really nicely wound strings um, because the tuning stability is much, much higher. It can take ages for all these like, little kinks and stuff to, to watch out. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, let's just tune this back up to an E. Fingers crossed it doesn't, um, does not uh, snap. possibility that will snap in the sense because it's got all these little um, damage that's been caused when it was wound or bound before. So I hope, I hope this doesn't snap. So I would like to play it. I'm not just doing it to make a video. I want this to be my sort of permanent cello guitar or mandolin guitar. I don't know, I don't know what to call this thing. Okay, almost. 
almost there, almost at the E. Sorry, YouTube, this is taking ages. There we go. So now let's have a final tune up. So C. actually a really really cheap guitar but the resonance on it is, is, is beautiful already So yeah, this is super cool because you can play all these uh, mandolin tunes. Um, my mind's just gone blank. But... Let me just get a plectrum and you'll you'll hear hear what I'm talking about. Okay, I can't find a, a plectrum, and it's getting way too hot in here, um, but I'll just use that, just use a little Hong Kong dollar, but beautiful mandolin places and then of course you can play things like the cello suite so. Uh, yeah, and so on and so forth. So the interesting thing to note, one, the resonance is just so much better. This is a really cheap guitar, really old strings, and I hope you can hear. It's just a very, very nice resonance between them. Um, secondly, uh, when you're playing things like the cello suite, you can just hold these notes. can't hold all of those notes at the same time I think on the on the on the traditional arrangement maybe not that passage but there are some passages so this means that um, it sounds a lot closer to the original and you get the, you, you, you get the harmony um, so I think that's really nice it's just really cool like if you're if if you're a guitar player and you want to expand what your guitar can do then you can do this um, and if you're a mandolin player looking to pick up the guitar, you can do this as well. And also, I think this is also the same as tenor guitar tuning as well. So if you're a tenor guitar player uh, or a tenor banjo player, whatever, um, yeah, you can you, you you can use this as well. A couple of words of warning. I think this won't. I think these are high tension strings. It's been 
over a year or a couple of years even since I changed the string on this one. This is like kind of my just toy guitar, I'll take it to the beach, whatever. Um, I think they're high tension strings and I think that's the reason that the C is quite resonant. I am going to experiment actually with getting baritone guitar strings or like a sort of seven string guitar string and using the seventh one that's supposed to be a B to bring it up to the C. Hopefully that will become uh, much more resonant, uh, it'll be even nicer. But I think it sounds quite good, but I recommend getting high tension strings. Um, but for other high tension strings, yeah, pulling the G up to an A, it's quite high tension. But the D and the E string are the same. The A has gone down to a G, which isn't a tremendous change, I think. Um, but and, and one string has come off, so it has been a change in tension. Um, so you need to be work, you need to be careful about what that does to a, to a guitar. I'm not a luthier. I'm not an instrument repair person. Um, I don't know what the effects of this would be long term. But like I said, this is like I don't know. 100 US dollars, this guitar, it's really the kind of low end. Um, I'm not looking to damage it, but if it happens to get a bit damaged in the pursuit of, I think what's quite a beautiful sound, then, um, then so be it. So yeah, um, if you've got any questions, drop them below. Uh, thank you, I've got to go have my, um, my breakfast now. Take care, bye YouTube.